Welcome back, boys and girls. Happy sunshine. We are going to pick up here uh, where we left off. Parker still is under cross-examination here. He's talking about uh, the videos and whether or not he was present when they were made. No, sir. And again, that's an approximate number. And you can't even tell us when those videos were made. Is that correct? <clears throat> sir, there is some information. The date's put online, and then they say July 10 call or something like that. So to my understanding, based on that representation, I can tell when the calls were made, and also we conducted interviews on the other side of those calls. Uh, again, this is, this is pretty much gibberish. The, the direct question is, and you can't even tell us when those videos were made, is that correct? <clears throat> And sir, there is some information, the dates are put online. <clears throat> that, that's only the date that the video was put online, and that's not the date that the video was made. He's answering a different question there. And then he just gives an example. They say July 10 call or something like that. <clears throat> So what he can say is, well, they've got labels that purport to have that information, but no, Mr. Bose, I cannot state for a certain fact uh, in this court when those videos were made. <clears throat> so he further goes on to say, so it's based, so to my understanding, based on that representation, I can tell when the calls were made. What he's doing is he's saying, hey, there's some other information that's tagged with the videos, and I'm assigning the meaning to that, that I can tell exactly uh, when the calls were made and, and when the videos were made. Well, he doesn't say that. He says when the calls were made. Uh, any, anybody who's a defense attorney, a prosecuting attorney, and a judge would would answer this more directly. This is just so strange. And we also conducted interviews on the other side of those calls. Uh, again, <clears throat> what the hell does that mean? We? Who else are you working with? So you conducted interviews. Now you say, when you're on the stand, you don't say, we conducted interviews. <clears throat> we talked to 15 people. I've got a list of names right here. I've got their statements right here. All of the information that I gave goes to support that the videos were made on or about or approximately whatever date. But this, uh-uh, no way, guys. So, Bose, he's got to rephrase the question. He's, he knows he's not getting the right answer or an answer to his question. Let me rephrase the question. You were not present at the time that the videos were made. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. This is like the most direct and seemingly authentic answer uh, and Parker Stills' testimony. That's correct, sir. That sounds like a cop on the stand right there. 51 line 11. <clears throat> and that's the best you have is either what the content of the videos say or the date that the video was uploaded. Is that correct? I would also rely on the interviews that we've conducted on the individuals that were present. For instance, on one of those phone calls. <laughs> Again, he's referring to interviews. He's saying, oh, individuals that were present and, oh, uh, for instance, on one of those phone calls. Which, which phone call? Which individual? What interview? Where's the interview write-up? And those individuals, without identifying them here in court today, you don't know what, if any,
potential animus or willing to curry favor with Miss Tucci those individuals would have, correct? I would not. No, sir. I wouldn't be privy to that. Okay. And were those individuals actually put into the grand jury? No, sir. Okay. Wow. Let me back up. What... And those individuals, without identifying them here in court today, so Bose is asking him not to identify those individuals. You don't know what, if any potential animus or willing to curry favor with Miss Tucci, those individuals would have. No, he wouldn't be privy to that. Were those individuals actually put into the grand jury? I don't know what he means put into. Does that mean mentioned or brought in as a witness to testify in the grand jury? But somehow Parker still is asking, or sorry, wow. Somehow Mr. Bose is asking Parker still if the individuals that he's referencing here in such a general unprofessional fashion were actually put into the grand jury, and I'm guessing put means to be brought in to testify, and the answer is no. Huh. Okay, now you've testified that prior to, during the FBI, you also, you had also worked as a defense lawyer and a prosecutor, is that correct? Yes, sir. I practice law, small town, for approximately seven and a half years. We did a little bit of everything down there. You know, down there, uh, I'm guessing that down means south. I think he's referring to Mississippi, and we found that on the, uh, the lawyer information page that we dug up. That's in a previous video. Okay. Prior to that, you were in one of the service branches, is that correct? I remain, sir, in the Army. Huh. I, I don't, uh... Wow, any service people out there want to decode the phraseology of this? Prior to that, you were in one of the service branches, is that correct? Instead of saying, yes, sir, I was in the army, says, I remained, sir, in the army. So the, the word prior in Mr. Bose's question here, so prior to being the small town lawyer, you were that's also past tense, in one of the service branches. Is that correct? So Bose is asking him a question about past tense and being over and done with. That's what's in, in the wording of this question. And Parker still says, I remained, sir, in the army. Page 52, line 10. This is making it sound like he's still in the army. Is this... How many different hats is this guy wearing at the same time? God, he's, he's way too educated and knowledgeable of courtroom procedure and the meanings of legal ease as far as what these words mean and the questions being posed to him. By his experience and education, he's got to have that. Why is he saying, I remained? So, it, is, he, is he in the army now? And an FBI agent? And a lawyer and a judge? Oh, pro tem judge, that's just temporary. All right, well, did you work in the capacity of military intelligence? I mean, what a great question. 
finally digging into some stuff about who he might be. No, sir. No, sir. I'm straight up JAG. I'm only certified as a 27 Alpha. Huh. Well. Twenty-seven oh, Alpha. Twenty-seven Alpha Street. Uh, all right, so military. The alphabet. Army jobs. Military Occupational Specialties, MOS. Well, let's see if this has 27 Alpha on it. It's not working. Huh. I don't know why that's showing up. Why this is a search return. Twenty-seven Alpha. Hey, are there any service people out there that know what Twenty-seven Alpha is? Please send me an email, lunacy at protonmail dot com. Twenty-seven Alpha, nineteen seventy-one Air Force Vietnam, three fifteen Happy. Dave Allen Jones, Twenty-seven Alpha, nineteen seventy-one. Flight 27 Alpha ebook. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I don't know what 27 Alpha is. I'm only certified 27 Alpha. So you have to have a different certification for military intelligence. Well, he's asking what JAG means. Yeah, Judge Advocate General. I've been trained at Charlottesville, Virginia for Army JAG. And you know, there's Charlottesville again. I'm currently in the National Guard on a reserve basis. Okay, so he's still, he is still in the Army. There, there's the answer to that question. That's why he said he remained. <clears throat> okay. Wow. This guy's wearing an awful lot of hats. So you're an attorney, correct? Oh, absolutely, yes, sir. And an attorney for the army, is that correct? You can get kind of the legal context. I'm not on active duty right now. When I'm a drill status or on orders, I would be an army attorney. Yes, sir. So he's saying, yes, he is, but he's not on active duty right now. But he's in the reserves, and what does he do for the reserves? Okay, a, a brief indulgence, Your Honor? Of course. So there's a pause. Well, no further questions, Your Honor. Wow, he's not going to ask any more questions. What? Uh, what's 27 Alpha, and why? Why didn't Bose ask for an explanation of what that was?
Wow, should have asked him to spell his full name out. Should have handed him the warrant here and said, hey, right up here in the upper right hand corner, it says FBI slash and, and some letters. Can you read that to me? Sure, still. Can you spell those? Can you spell that name still? S-T-I-L-L. -L. And how did you spell your name today? Like right there. God, what? That was an easy chess move that, that could have easily been done right there in the courtroom with him. It wasn't done. You know, I don't, I don't think that Mr. Bose was really familiar enough with this case and who was going to be testifying. And, and really, who's, who's looking for somebody to, to lie when they're under, under oath? Uh, that, you're, you're not really looking for it until a whole bunch of shit doesn't make sense. Kind of like what we've been doing by reading through this. And, and when that doesn't make sense, then you start scratching your head and being like, okay, what's going on here? Where's, where's the misinformation coming from? And, and once you've broken down all the observations and connected them together, really the only way that they can be connected together it brings up a picture that just about anybody is going to arrive at themselves if they've got an open mind. All right, well, Mr. Bose is no further questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Bose. Ms. Walters, do you have redirect? The government does not have redirect based on that, Your Honor. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a very long cross-examination at all, but it's apparent from what we do have here that Parker Steele or Still is not answering direct questions. I just, I can't stress enough how much this is hammered into every cop's head. And the reason it's hammered into every cop's head is because the lawyers and the judges appreciate it when you show up in court, you give clear articulate answers, you've got all your paperwork in order, and and you look and act like you know this case inside and out, like you've done your due diligence. This whole I don't I don't know what to call this courtroom hearing here, but it is the farthest departure from the the courtroom procedures that I'm used to. Thank you, Ms. Walters. Agent Steele, thank you. You may step down. Thank you, Your Honor, and the witness is excused. Ms. Walters, does the United States have other evidence? No further witnesses for the government, Your Honor. Are there other exhibits that the government intends to introduce? The government is going to introduce the pre-trial services agency report as government exhibit number five. Would you mark that please? Yes, and I'll provide it to the court. It's the same pre-trial services agency report that was provided to the parties at the initial appearance and to the court as well as from pre-trial services. I don't know what this pretrial services agency report is all about that's exhibit five, but I would really like to take a look at it. I mean, we'll just throw that on the pile. Thank you. Do you still have that, Mr. Bose? I do, Your Honor. And in addition to our standing objection, I believe that there's actually a code provision that says that the court is not allowed to receive that evidence. I was not prepared that the government was going to be seeking to introduce what's already part of the court record, but we would object as well. Wow, that's interesting. Thank you, Mr. Bose. I will suggest the following. The court will not admit Exhibit 5. The court has already received Exhibit 5, as all of us did at the time of Miss Tucci Giraffe's initial appearance. Indeed, Ms. Walters, <clears throat> you may wish to withdraw Exhibit 5 so that we have a clear record. <clears throat> yes, that's fine, Your Honor. 
very well. And for the record, the government has provided that as an exhibit to the defense previously. Very well, as I indicated, the court has received it, as all of us did, on July 26, but it will not be admitted as an exhibit. Very well, Your Honor. Does that complete the government's presentation? The government does have argument, Your Honor. Maybe Your Honor wishes us to do it after the break. Thank you, Ms. Walters. Mr. Bose, is there evidence you will offer? If so, it may be that we will take a break now and resume after the recess. Your Honor, I think, Judge Debbie interrupts him, if you only wish argument, then I believe we can hear the party's arguments now. Your Honor, we will be, well, first of all, we move to strike Agent Steele's testimony and all the exhibits that were entered through him again. Oh, okay. Wonderful. All right, so he's, he's starting to get the idea that something stinks here. Mr. Bose is starting to, he's starting to wake up here. Page 55, line 16. Yeah. Yeah, listen to how this sounds. Your Honor, we will be, and then we got this double hyphen here. That's a pause or, or you know, he's cutting himself off. Well, first of all, we move to strike Agent Steele's testimony and all the exhibits that were entered through him again. May I ask, just so that we have a clear record, whether the ground of your motion, grounds are the same grounds that you have offered previously? Yes. Wow. Well, you know, in real time in court, for somebody who wasn't really that familiar with this case, court-appointed attorney, I see why he hasn't picked all the stuff out that... Uh, that we've picked out going through this this transcript. Um, we're Monday morning quarterbacking here, but but wow, there's plenty of things that he could have added on top of his previous grounds. Like, uh, judge, look at this signature on the warrant. It's not a valid warrant. Move to release the prisoner immediately. <laughs> Something like that. But. He just says that all he has are all the grounds that he offered previously. So very well, having considered those grounds thoroughly, the court will deny the motion to strike Agent Steele's testimony. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, we will be seeking to introduce the escort notice. We had a notice of filing yesterday, some documents that we're seeking to introduce at this time. That would be the only exhibit that we would be introducing. Otherwise, we would be prepared to proceed to argument at this point. So, and then he gets cut off. If there is a volume of exhibits that were included with the notice of filing, I believe it is more important that you identify one by one what, what it is that you wish to offer so that I can hear from Ms. Walters. And perhaps you can use the time during the recess to confer and we can proceed in a more expeditious fashion when we return. Wow! Wow, Debbie's, Debbie's irritated. She is being very short. That's fine, Your Honor. Very well, thank you very much, Miss Tucci Giraffe. Please return with the marshal. And another recess is taken. And here, this is the way you expect a recess to start up with the deputy clerk talking first. Recalling criminal case year 2017-531-M. United States versus Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Lisa Walters for the government. David Bowes for the defendant. Pre-trial officer is Andre Sidbury. This is an identity hearing on a removal. So Debbie asks, now Mr. Bose, are you ready to resume? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Before the recess, you indicated that you completed your cross-examination of Agent Steele and that you may wish to move into evidence certain exhibits. That's correct, Your Honor. Your Honor, as the court knows, yesterday, 
And we filed a notice of filing with the court and attached to that notice of file was a 286 page document which contained 4,040 UCC filings identified as exhibits 1 through 40. So what, hmm, okay, what I think this, I think what's going on here, and, and Barbara DeVico, I don't, wow, I don't know what the standards are uh, for a court reporter to write out, but if I was, if I was Bose, I might have said words similar to a 286 page document which contained 40, 40 UCC filings. So I think that's why we have 4040 here. This second 40 should be in parentheses and even written out in English with quotes uh, so that we understand 40 and then he said, you know, 40. Uh, identified as exhibits 1 through 40. And at this time, and then he cuts himself off, and the first, the original due declaration and notice of factualized trust. Number two is an original due declaration of issue by original repository. Annex 3 through Annex 40 are UCC filings, and they've been filed over the years by Ms. Tucci. We would be seeking to introduce that as defense exhibit number one. As it's our position, it goes directly to the identification issue that the court has to address. Whoa! All right. Wow, this is, this is like, hey, Bose is trying to do the right thing here, guys. So... Deborah says, what is your argument, Mr. Bose, concerning how those exhibits, in your words, go to the identification issue? Oh, wow. See, wow, this is, okay, so on page 57, line 20, where the court, or Judge Deborah A. Robinson, I believe, Oh, listen to this question that she's asking. What is your argument, Mr. Bose, concerning how those exhibits, in your words, go to the identification issue? She is telling him in a very subtle fashion that she only wants to hear from him. Does Bose have an understanding of how these exhibits go to the identification issue? If Heather Ann Tucci had been allowed to serve as her own attorney to represent herself, this question would be asked of her, and Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe is going to have that answer. Bose is coming into this late. He's playing catch-up in the middle of this hearing. He's waking up to the fact that the court systems are corrupt and that the Constitution really doesn't provide protections for anybody, and... And I don't think he knows this answer. Your Honor, the only issue that the court has to decide today is whether or not Miss Tucci Giraffe is the person who's been indicted in the Eastern District. Excuse me, the District of Tennessee. It's our position that the annex has been shown that she's in fact not the person who was indicted in Tennessee. May I ask you to further articulate your argument, please, regarding the statement you just made? <sighs> yeah, here we go, guys. I'm not sure what more I can give to the court at this point, but it is our position that they do refute the identification issue. <sighs> How do the documents refute the testimony of the officer? of the agent, excuse me, of the of Special Agent Steele. <laughs> wow, I've refuted the testimony of Special Agent Steele. Uh, yeah. 
As the court knows, it doesn't have to refute the testimony. It can certainly undercover, undercut the government's case as far as the identity. The court could receive his testimony and also accept our exhibit and find that the exhibit trumps the testimony that was given by Agent Steele. And that's especially the case where we have an individual who testified under oath about instances that he was not personally involved with. An individual who had never even met the person who he claimed to make the identification for until Monday of this week. And our position is that the contents of defense exhibit number one would undercut the reliability of that identification. That's all I have, Your Honor. Yeah, that's, you know, if you're giving a nutshell overview of just the generalities that you understand, I can see how that's the best perception that he has. Uh, wow. Uh, unfortunately, that, that's just not good enough for this hearing. Very well. Thank you very much, Mr. Bose. Am I correct that you are calling the entire series of documents Defendants Exhibit 1? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. And just the record is clear. Probably just so the record is clear. These are the exact same documents that were filed. And the court says, interrupts them very well, on ECF. As I'm sure you noted, they are separated. I believe solely for filing purposes into two subsets. So ECF, that's the electronic uh, court filing system, I believe. That's correct, Your Honor. The reason for that was that we could not actually PDF a document quite this large. And so one document is 156 pages and the other one is 150 pages. That was my understanding. I simply want to determine that your reference to defendants exhibit number one is to both components, both portions. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Thank you very much. Now, Ms. Walters. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Your Honor, the government does oppose the admission of defendants exhibit number one. The government did have the opportunity to receive the document through ECF. But it's the government's position that the document, the exhibit, and the documents that make up the exhibit do not go in any way to the issue of identity which is before the court. The government believes that the documents supported defendant's ideology, but it does not support or present any facts and in fact is incomprehensible that would support or refute or in any way present evidence that undercuts the government's testimony and evidence thus far with respect to her identity. So on those bases, the government does oppose the admission of defendants exhibit number one. Thank you very much, Ms. Walters. Mr. Bose, do you wish to respond? No, Your Honor. Are you able, using a single one of the multiple documents that comprise defendants exhibit one, to proffer how any such exhibit is at all relevant to the determination that this court must make this afternoon. Wow, she's asking him to do it right there. Oh, wow. If he just had understanding of this, he could answer that. But she's asking these direct questions, <clears throat> telling Bose that, no, it's got to be in your words, Mr. Bose. Heather's not allowed to represent herself, so she can't testify unless you put her on the stand. She can't say anything. And then anything that she says can and will be used against her in a court of law. So what I see Deborah doing here is asking all the pertinent questions to somebody that she knows is not capable to give her the answers and that's going to be her, her legal justification for making the ruling that she makes. Oh. 
Oh, wow. Are you able, using a single one of the multiple documents that comprise Defendant's Exhibit 1, to proffer how any such exhibit is at all relevant to the determination that this court must make this afternoon? Well, first of all, she's assuming that out of the 40 documents, 4-0 documents, that any one of those by itself is going to be legal justification outside all of the rest of them. And Debbie knows that. This is not a fair question here. Your Honor, we believe it's directly relevant and will make those arguments at the time that we have to convince the court that the government has not met its burden. Very well, thank you very much, Mr. Bowes. The record makes clear that the exhibits were first brought to the court's attention by the clerk's office after the documents were delivered to the clerk's office. Because the because Miss Tucci Giraffe was represented by counsel, the court's action with respect to the documents, as is clear from ECF, was to enter an order making them available to you, Mr. Bowes, so that you can determine what action you believe should be taken with respect to those documents. You did, of course, review the documents and ultimately filed them through ECF. The court did not seek to intervene in the issue of whether or not those documents would be filed. They were filed by you and they do appear on ECF as document number two in two parts. The mere fact that the documents are part of the ECF record does not render them, inadmit does not render them admissible at this hearing, however. And the court must undertake, she cuts herself off, the court believe it was incumbent upon the court to undertake an examination of the documents, which the court did so in order to determine the question of admissibility. The court finds having done so that the documents are not relevant to the issue before me. They may well be relevant to some other proceedings. By stating that, I do not mean to suggest that they are or that I have a view of whether they will be. They are not relevant to any matter concerning the identity of the person before me as the person named in the indictment and the arrest warrant. And because that is the full extent of what I am able to do in the course of this proceeding, the motions, the motion for the admission of defendants exhibit number one in, into evidence is denied. Wow. Wow. Wow, she is impossible. A brick wall. Asking questions that may not uh, may not even be possible. Like, can you just use one of those documents? Telling him that I only want to hear your words, your understanding, Mr. Bose. Wow, all the gold was sitting in Heather's head and it was blatantly ignored. Okay, well, we're, we're in the middle of page 62. I'm going to cut it off there. Uh, We'll see you next time. This just keeps getting deeper and deeper. More observations getting thrown on the pile. All right. All my love, guys. Lunacy at ProtonMail.com. L-U-N-A-S-E-E. -E.